Hello, my friends, and how are you doing? Today, I have an absolutely stunning collaboration for you with Enigmatic E. He's showing you how he created his viral video where he uses simple video input, even without a green screen, to transition between worlds with AI. And as a bonus for my Patreon supporters, I also have an interview with him about the creative process linked below this video. Let's get started. Hello, Olivio. Just want to say I'm a big fan of your channel. So I'm going to do a demonstration of how I do this. It's going to be a short version of what I did. Here I got some footage that I already recorded myself. It's well, again, it's very basic. It's two movements. And then I'm going to run this through Viggo so that it can change me into a different person. Here in Viggo, now I'm going to be uploading my video and my reference image. Okay, there's my video right there. And now I'm going to upload the image. I actually generated this image of this guy. He looks kind of funny. I thought it would be interesting to use. So and then I'm going to come down here where it says background and I'm going to put green screen. And this, I love this because then I don't have to do any rotoscoping. It's going to do everything automatically. So I'm going to go ahead and click create. And this is what it gave me. Not too bad, right? And now I have it here in my After Effects project. It's not as smooth as you would like it. So some of the frames seem to be missing with the movements. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the suggestion of somebody who commented on my previous video and going to go ahead and interpolate this. So there are a couple options out there for interpolating. There are some free options, but I'm going to be using Topaz AI. So I brought my video in here and then I'm going to go into frame interpolation. And I think I'm going to set it to 4X. Maybe it's too much, maybe it's overkill, but we'll see. And then I'm going to go ahead and export this. As you can see here, the interpolated video is way longer than the original one right here. So it's because it extended it, it added frames, and it just made it into slow motion. So I'm just going to speed it up at, so that it could be the length of the original video. So I went ahead and added a key light to remove the background on both clips. And on the left, you have the original video, and on the right, you have the interpolated videos. So we're going to move a few frames to see if it really does smooth it out a little bit. Come in here. Okay, as you can see, this specific frame on the left is stuck there, but on the right, there is still movement happening. And then finally, it the original one moves. It, you see that blur, but I think it's fine because it kind of gives a sense like motion blur. And then it stops there. And on the right, you see that there's a little bit more frames in there that's not on the left. And this might seem like something mine, but you can actually see the difference when you put them side by side. That worked really well. Now we can add the backgrounds from World Labs. Um, the only thing is that since World Labs is still not released to the public, this is actual footage that I pulled out from World Labs and I also set up the camera movements. So this is what I got from it. It's a little bit slow, so I'm gonna have to speed it up. It's going to move to the left and then it's gonna to move to the right. So I'm going to go ahead and go into time and then enable time remapping. So I have my two keyframes from start and then before it starts to turn to the right, right there, I'm going to create a keyframe and I'm going to take these two and then just bring it forward so that I can speed it up a little bit. And then maybe I just bring this here so it's a lot faster. Bam, bam. All right. So that probably has to be a little bit faster. So something like that. And then I'm going to transition into another world right here. A lot of people do this trick with cameras where they just do fast motions to a certain direction and then they shoot at a different location and they start off where they ended the last time they shot. And then it gives this really cool transition. And that's kind of what I'm doing here. It's turning in a certain direction. And then the second clip has to continue in that direction. And then it's going to move back. So again, I'm going to do the same thing. So turn. Obviously, we can add keyframe interpolation and adjust curves to make it look even better. So let's see how that looks. I will also add a few more moving backgrounds so that we can make this a little bit longer. I'm going to show you what it looks like now. So you do this, turn, and different locations. So yeah, that's how I do it. And what I like to do is... You know, because obviously this person does not match with the background. There's different ways you can go about it. Let me actually show you two different kinds of results you can get. One of them, I'm gonna I'm gonna run it through a comfy UI workflow. And then another one, I'm gonna run it through runways video to video and just show you some things you can get with this kind of technique. 
All right, now that I have my clip here in Runway, the thing is uh, there are different environments. So if I put a prompt, it's going to apply it to all the environments, unfortunately. What I normally do is that I run it multiple times with different prompts each time and then in After Effects, then I cut it so that it's only being applied to those specific environments. Let's just start with like man at a beach, for example, very simple, basic. Let's just go ahead and generate that. And there is the issue of also consistency because it could be that it gives me a different man for each generation. And that's kind of tricky. Sometimes I, I would try to find workarounds by being like very detailed, like a man with a beard and glasses and an Afro that sometimes helps. And then also sometimes if you come here to settings, uh, make sure your structure transformation is not too high because that the higher you go, the more it strays away from the original video. And then also having a fixed seed might help. And sometimes you get lucky like I did and I got something somewhat similar for each generation. So you get stuff like this. You can see that the, the, the background is affecting the lighting a little bit. Obviously, if you want it to be stronger, you can bring this up a little bit and then maybe it gives it a little bit better results. Let's try that. All right, so let's see what this one looks like. I think this one looks actually better. It looks a little bit more realistic and the lighting is much better. And then you can do a man on a spaceship. Okay, he looks somewhat similar. So now we have this footage here of him on a spaceship. So like I said, we edit these together like this. So that just kind of to show you an example of what this could look like if I were to finish it like that start off at the beach and then you're in a spaceship suddenly and then you're moving back and then of course you can rerun it with different environments like I did right here so I think it's a really cool effect um, let's do one more with comfy UI and I'm gonna be using Mick Mumpet's uh, workflow so shout out to him I'm gonna be using this exact footage but now my subject should be relighted to match the backgrounds more so let's check that out now we're in comfy UI using a workflow that was created by Mick Mumpets. Here, we're going to put our video footage of our subject and our background, which I had to export separately. He did put an option here for alpha mats, but you know, I, I just want to just show a quick demonstration. So I'm not going to bother with that. Now that these videos are uploaded here, I'm going to just press Q. This is going to take a while. So we're going to jump to the end results. And here is our final results. We want to take a look at it. The edges look a little bit rough. Maybe if I used the alpha mat, it would have made it better, but I'm not sure. But uh, you kind of get the idea with the relighting. I think it's a really cool effect and I truly, truly believe things are just going to keep improving and getting better. So, so yeah, hopefully you guys like this example and I can't wait for World Labs to release to the world. So once again, I want to thank Olivio for having me. It was super fun and hopefully we can do this again in the future. Thank you very much for Enigmatic E. This was probably one of the best videos on my channel. Leave a comment if you like it, leave a like also and thanks for watching. Bye.